Hi. So thanks very much for the opportunity to talk uh, at LISA meeting. I want to discuss thermodynamics of rotating black hole clusters, which is uh, based on the paper that Andrei Guzinov, Jerong Zhu, and I published uh, uh, several months ago. And I have to say that from the outset that most of the work uh, was done by Andrei Guzinov. So first of all, what is the problem that we are trying to address? You have a supermassive black hole and within the radius of influence of a supermassive black hole, you have something like a million stars and uh, stellar mass black holes. So stellar mass black holes are typically 10, 20, 30 times as massive as the uh, star from the main population. And the question is, how are these distributed? And of course, uh, of particular interest to Lisa is how are the black holes distributed, small black holes distributed around the big black hole. So uh, two possible ways of addressing this problem theoretically. The first way is unbody simulations. Um, they turn out to be quite expensive. And for the phenomenon that I'm going to describe today, they turn out to be actually too expensive. So the second approach is statistical physics approach. And just to remind you how this works. So typically in statistical physics approach, one assumes that all microstates, which satisfy some external constraints, typically the integrals of motion. So all of these microstates are equally likely. And the second, um, um, the second thing which is typically done is that uh, you find configurations which maximize entropy because they're the most likely collections of microstates. And when this is assumed, then one obtains Boltzmann time distributions, which are very powerful in describing um, distributions of uh, uh, particles in the system. So uh, this is great, but unfortunately, uh, typically statistical physics methods don't really work very well for gravitational systems. However, uh, Scott Tremaine and Jihad Tuma and others have shown that in particular for galactic nuclei, statistical physics methods can be valid and also very powerful. So the first thing to notice is that um, the relaxation between the stars uh, is not uh, really due to two-body Coulomb scattering, but it's mostly due to the effect which is called resonant relaxation. Uh, it was so named in the, uh, by the, paper, in the paper by Rao and Tremaine, published in 1996. Resonant relaxation is easy to understand. So suppose we have two stars on two Keplerian orbits, elliptical orbits, uh, because uh, these elliptical orbits change slowly, uh, the uh, gravitational interactions between the stars accumulate, and in particular one can, one can imagine spreading each of the stars over the ellipse and then computing interaction between the ellipses. So this is the so-called secular approximation. And um, it turns out that the coherent torque due to these interactions is far greater than the torques due to chance gravitational encounters between the stars. And so what happens is, uh, as a result of these torques, um, the, ex the uh, eccentricities and the angular momenta of the orbits evolve quite rapidly, much more rapidly than the semi-major axis of the stellar orbits. So you have a fast relaxation and angular momentum, but not an energy. Now it turns out that in this situation, uh, in the situation of this restricted dynamics, where instead of considering uh, dynamics of individual particles, you consider dynamics of the elliptical orbits uh, interacting via secular torques. It turns out that statistical physics is applicable to those dynamics uh, because there are no hard singularities. And in fact, uh, you can write down the distribution which is written on the right hand side, that probability distribution is a function of momenta and positions, is a typical Boltzmann exponential e to the minus beta e of p a q, 
And plus, because angular momentum is conserved in the system, you have to add in the exponential the term which is linear in the angular momenta of the stars. So you have this term minus gamma vector dot producted with the angular momentum of the individual star. Now it turns out that this beta, which in classical statistical physics is uh, inverse temperature, it can be both positive or negative, and this is because the phase space is compact. This was discovered by Onsager in late 40s. And the vector gamma, uh, in this particular case, is, is an intensive thermodynamic variable, but it's related to the angular velocity of the cluster. So angular velocity can be defined as being the ratio of gamma and beta. And actually, as we'll see later on, this angular velocity has a very specific physical meaning for the systems. So Tuma and Tremaine uh, went on and did analysis of uh, this stellar systems using this type of formalism. And they found a very interesting thing is that when you consider a sequence of equilibria and you vary beta, and so this has, uh, in their papers is a sequences of non-rotating equilibria, so the total angular momentum is zero. And as you can see, the beta uh, goes from negative values to positive values. And there is a very clear phase transition that they found in particular examples uh, that for negative values of beta and uh, for small positive values of beta smaller than some critical value beta zero, the equilibria are spherical. But once you, beta is above beta zero, the equilibria become lopsided. So this is um, a very beautiful phase transition, which was discovered in the numerical experiments. Now, um, this is a great achievement, but there are some things to uh, do still. Uh, so first of all, uh, two main remains algorithms were quite complex. So they had to study particular systems and uh, particular cases and published about one paper per each case. And as a result, they gave no general proof for this phase transition, just found it numerically. Another serious uh, direction that needs improvement is that they included no rotation in their analysis. And of course, as clusters are rotating. And finally, of great interest for people in this conference is that they considered only single mass clusters and their clusters had no stellar mass black holes. So all of these things we addressed in uh, our paper. So first of all, we designed a very simple algorithms, much, much simpler than the one used in uh, Tuma and Tremaine. Um, and this algorithm allows to do very quick calculations on laptop computer. So basically, just briefly, what we do is we consider something like half a million of fixed elliptical orbits. Each of these orbits have variable weights. So we initialize the potential, we compute the Boltzmann weights, we use these weights to recalculate the mass distribution, recalculate the potential, and then we repeat this procedure. It's very simple and the iterations converge pretty quickly and they converge to a thermodynamical equilibrium. And as Andrei Gruzinov uh, says in, in the paper, is that direct brute force solutions of the nonlinear system of equations is possible with only minor numerical inventiveness. Okay, well, it's minor as far as Andre is concerned. I think it's actually quite beautiful what he came up with. Let me just briefly uh, go over the results that we obtained. So uh, uh, we, obtain, we obtain robust solutions with or without rotation. Um, when we include rotation, we do see states uh, which are both axially symmetric and have broken symmetry. So we, stay, we see thermodynamic equilibria, which are analogous to the eccentric disks in Andromeda. Um, and we think that uh, the, this means that the eccentric disk that we see in the nucleus of Andromeda is likely in the thermodynamic, is likely a stellar system and too much remain thermodynamic equilibrium. And what happens with such eccentric configurations is that they process and that they process with omega, where omega is that angular velocity that I de defined earlier as the ratio of gamma vector and beta. So omega actually has a physical meaning. This is the 
precession of equilibrium, the angular velocity of precession of the um, angular distribution of the stars um, when the symmetry is broken. We also give a very general proof of the phase transition, um, analytical proof and uh, technical point that we show that for some values of temperature, there actually too much main thermodynamics has to break down and we have so-called degenerate states. I won't have time to discuss them. Now, of utmost importance for this um, audience is that we consider stellar mass black holes and we find that stellar mass black holes are very sensitive. Their distribution is very sensitive to what the cluster is doing. And in fact, it amplifies various interesting features of the cluster. So for example, if the cluster is rotating, the stellar mass black holes are condensing into disks, which are much flatter, much, much flatter than the rest of the cluster. If the cluster uh, features eccentric orbits and lopsided equilibria, then the uh, orbits of black holes are much more eccentric and uh, collectively much more lopsided than that of the Terran cluster. And in general, even if the cluster is spherical, they occupy special orbits. So they can be very eccentric or they can be very circular in spherical clusters, right? So they can be, depending on the sign of temperature, if the temperature is negative, the orbits of stellar mass black holes are much more eccentric. And if the temperature is positive, the orbits of stellar mass black holes are much more circular. Okay, so let me just give you a few visual examples of the type of things we find. So this is um, one of the lopsided rotating equilibria that we find and especially look at the view from above uh, x, y plane, you see two maxima. So one of the maximum is basically due to the location of the supermassive black hole and stellar clustering towards that location. And then the other maxima is due to maximum is due to the clustering of stars near the upper centers of the eccentric orbits. And this is the classical argument for the eccentric disk, which was given by Tremaine in 1995. So we obtain such configurations as solutions to, you know, Boltzmann equations. So this is, this is the thermodynamic equilibrium state, uh, which is quite remarkable. Uh, we also, of course, obtain lopsided clusters, just like Tuma and Tremaine. So in the blue, you see lopsidedness, so the projections um, uh, X and Z uh, plane and X and Y plane. You can see the cluster is slightly lopsided um, uh, and it's axisymmetric, as can be seen uh, uh, by looking at projection of density, stellar density onto YZ plane. Um, but you can also see that the configuration of black holes, in this particular case, black holes are 10 times more massive than uh, the stars, the rest of the stars. You can see black holes are significantly more lopsided and significantly on significantly more eccentric orbits than the rest of the stars. And here is slightly rotating cluster. You see um, the cluster is, rotate, is flattened only very slightly, as can be seen by blue contours by the rotation. But black holes amplify tremendously and they condense into disks, rotating disks. These rotating disks um, were um, found or predicted, if you like, by Sogian and Koshish by a completely different method uh, two years ago. They considered uh, uh, vector resonant relaxation and they did Ma uh, Monte Carlo simulations um, to show that in, the, in their systems, uh, the orbits of uh, black holes were clustered in, uh, in rotating systems. So we, conf we confirmed this uh, using our method. And um, also, I think we understand it from a different point of view. Um, this, is, this is spherical clusters. So what you see, this is the eccentricity distribution, mean eccentricity of systems in the spherical cluster as a function of uh, semi-major axis, which is plotted on the x-axis. And um, you can see um, that for, um, so what you see in the dashed line is the so-called maximum entropy distribution. You can see that um, the uh, eccentricities of black holes are either much greater than the, than the eccentricities of stars. This is if the temperature is negative. Uh, or it's much less 
if the temperature is positive. So black hole orbits turn out to be very sensitive thermometers. Finally, I want to show you um, for the rotating cluster, what is the mean inclination of a black hole as a function of mass, of the black hole's mass. When black hole's mass is zero, uh, this can happen. The black holes are, such black holes would be distributed completely isotropically and they would occupy a maximum entropy configuration. However, as the mass of the black hole increases, you can see when the black holes become a hundred times more massive and the main, um, uh, than, the, than most of the stars and the average star, then the mean inclination becomes very small and the disk formed by this black holes becomes very flat. Okay, conclusions. Too much remain thermodynamics is a very powerful method for analyzing galactic nuclei. Uh, we do see that M31 eccentric disk is likely uh, a thermal equilibrium state of too much remaining thermodynamics. The second point is that black holes are attracted to special orbits. Um, they form disks and rotating clusters. Uh, uh, they have eccentricities which are much more extreme than eccentricities of um, uh, average stars. And something which I didn't really have time to talk about, but rotation of the cluster um, uh, thus, has, uh, thus is likely to have major impact on embryos, and this is um, something which we mentioned in the paper, but we're now analyzing this in some considerable detail. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation, and I would like to um, uh, take questions.